Hello, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is about Etruscan, Etruscan society. And in particular, the focus of uh, this lesson are um, Etruscan rituals and burials. Funerary rituals and burials with some example. Thank you all for your participation um, to, the, to that lesson and or for the previous lessons. You have been so many. I'm very kind and very glad. And thank you all for your comment and for your um, um, best uh, wishes and uh, words of luck. Thank you. You are pretty much appreciated. So, um, I'm waiting for more people to come. Hello, hi. So, um, shall we begin? I'm waiting for more people to come. So, as I was mentioning, this lesson is about Etruscan funerary rituals and burial. Uh, thank you all that you joined the course. You are mm, many, many people. I'm so happy uh, that you decide to follow my course. Um, so, um, I hope that you find my lesson uh, entertaining and easy to follow. Uh, please remember that if you want to be eligible for a certificate of attendance, you have to enroll this course. You can still do. Uh, you have to check the info box of the, this video. Um, you have to contact me uh, on social media or uh, the people at Save Cultural Heritage Group. So uh, this course is uh, totally free and it's meant from for everybody, for every level of, um, of study. And uh, um, today's lesson, given the most recent event, is dedicated to the memory of Mario Torelli, who died yesterday. And uh, he was one of the, the most famous and uh, um, well-known scholar about Etruscan society, um, in more in general, Roman and Italian societies, pre-Roman societies. And um, here you can see some of, of uh, the cover, Italian cover of um, um, a selection of his books. So if you are interested, I suggest you um, into reading one of the, of the one of these books because they are um, pretty good. So, if you don't know um, what do we mean by Etruscan, um, the Etruscan were the population that lived in Italy before uh, Rome came to the power. And uh, uh, here you can see um, close up of a map of uh, Italy, uh, their towns and their area of influence um, was the one that uh, laid into the, the center and up to the some part of the north and southern uh, part of Italy, the, um, the part of Italy that um, stands in front of uh, the Tyrrhenian Sea. By the way, the Tyrrhenian Sea uh, took its name from the Etruscan population uh, because uh, ancient Greek called them Tyrrhenois. So um, that was the name in which they were 
um, known by the Greeks and ancient population of that time. Uh, the um, modern part of Italy that correspond to um, the Etruscan um, area is uh, uh, Tuscany and uh, the name of Tuscany, the region Tuscany, um, brings uh, the, uh, the, the radix and uh, the etymology uh, derived from Etruscan part of uh, uh, Lacius, of uh, Lazio, Rome, southern part of, uh, um, of Italy, near Naples, and um, more in the south, in the center, Emilia-Romagna, up to the north, Venetus, and so on, even the Isle. So, um, where the Etruscan a population that uh, was um, originated from the Italic land or um, did they came from far away? Well, um, uh, the classical um, uh, scholars uh, of that time, um, mainly Greeks, believe that um, they have an Eastern origin, uh, they came from that part of uh, um, uh, Minor Asia, Asia, Asia Minor, Near East, and uh, uh, some of them, some of the um, uh, ancient uh, Greek um, scholar believed also uh, that they could come uh, from uh, um, one of the uh, the aisle in front of uh, Near East. Some of them, um, particularly Romans, uh, believe that they came from um, Troy, the region of Troy, or that uh, they were uh, origin originated from the same land as them, such as Italy. Uh, during uh, most recent times, uh, they were um, done many studies about ancient DNA. Um, some of them around at the, the end of the 19th centuries, and uh, um, some of them were of the um, 19 uh, years, um, not, not century, excuse me of the 90s and some of them done in the early 2000 um, linked the Trashkan with uh, um, population from uh, Turkey, modern Turkey and uh, the upper part of the, um, the Dead Sea. But more recent um, studies about DNA of a modern uh, people who lived in Tuscany um, show a correspondence which is uh, common to all the uh, people who lived back then in Italy and even a correspondence to some population of the Balkans of the northern part, eastern, northern, northern east of Europe. So their um, origin is still not uh, um, well debated, but um, most of the, the scholars believed that they have, um, they have originated directly from another um, Italic society that lived there well before um, the Roman came to the, to the place, uh, to the power place, and uh, that was the Villanovian culture, unknown under the name of Villanovian culture. Also, the uh, Villanovian culture, if you see here in the map, easily overlapped to the, uh, the region, which will be later occupied by the Etruscan. 
Also, the Etruscan language, it's not one of Indo-European uh, origin. It's uh, a non-Indo-European origin. And so um, this is also very interesting for the uh, study of the origin of that uh, society, of that people. But, and uh, later on, that Etruscan society, which uh, we can um, chronologically put into the last phase of the uh, Iron Age in Italy, from the 9th century before Christ up to the 1st century before Christ, uh, was later englobated into the Roman society, because we all know that the, the myth of the first early uh, kings of uh, Rome, the mythological silver kings uh, of Rome, had three uh, Etruscan king. Uh, the, the last three, they were Etruscan. Tarquin the Elder, Servius Tullius and Tarquin the Proud. So um, many scholars and uh, um, researchers about Etruscan societies believed that uh, Etruscan uh, shared the same lineage and the same uh, ethnicity and origin as the one of the um, people of the Villanovian culture. And they represent the very last step, the very last phase of that culture. Mario Torelli was one of them. Uh, the Villanovian uh, culture uh, see a population who lived in Ut uh, is very common and share the same um, um, features as many other uh, population of prehistoric Europe and prehistoric proto italic society. The um, burial custom were mainly um, incineration and that share also um, common feature with the, the so-called Urnfield um, culture of Northern Europe. The burial of the, the, the seed happened um, after the cremation of the body. If you remember yesterday when we saw um, the uh, cremation of uh, uh, over a pyre um, used in Greece, well, mainly it was just the same. And the seed was placed under um, a stock of wooden and some inflammable material. And then his ashes and bones and uh, traces of uh, his uh, grey goods that were um, and goods that were uh, placed, uh, ornaments, garments, um, in, together in closeness with the seed uh, over the, the pyre. Um, every one of them was, um, play, was um, taken and put into the urn. The urn was placed and buried into a simple pit uh, grave and closed by a sort of a roof. The very basic one uh, was made by simple layers of stones. The, most, uh, the more accurate one had a sort of, a, um, uh, of clay, of terracotta, of a, um, cooked clay uh, roof shaped enclosure and then the very top of the grave was closed by uh, a stone. It was encircled by several stones as well. The urn of the Villanovian culture were very peculiar. Uh, they were made about in pottery for the most part. Uh, there are some examples of uh, um, metal you can see here and here of metal um, urn or in, in pottery 
that emulated metal, as in that case, specific case. Uh, the shapes were um, the one of uh, resemble that resemble a knot, a house of that time, or um, it was a shape of a mug, and they were covered by another um, basis or by another mug, or um, to a sort of helmet, which has the same uh, characteristic, the same feature as the one uh, made in metal from the uh, panoplia of warriors. This is a reconstruction of uh, uh, a tomb with its uh, uh, grave goods. You can see here um, they were all uh, made in metal and they are fibulae, pins and other uh, personal and uh, clothes garment. So um, at the very first of their um, or uh, of their uh, time, uh, the Etruscan, as the uh, Villanovian people, buried and cremated uh, their dead. But after uh, the time passed and uh, uh, Etruscan society became um, more richer and wealth spread, another type of uh, um, funerary custom took place and that was the one of the inhumation. Also, the tomb became much more uh, greater into the, the, their spatial um, area. And uh, um, that is a reflection of the wealth of the Etruscan society, because around the, the 7th, uh, 6th and 5th century before Christ took its, uh, um, its top and they uh, were merchants and traders about many uh, goods, such as, for example, copper, uh, iron, uh, more metal, and uh, uh, they even produce wine and uh, sell wine all around uh, many different areas in the Mediterranean basin, in the Mediterranean Sea. They were um, pretty good uh, sailors and uh, maritime uh, traders. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the tombs reflect all that wealth that they had. Um, as you can see here in the picture, we passed from a simple um, pit shaft grave, from a tolos grave, up to a tumulus grave. Uh, the tumulus grave, as you can see here, many examples from uh, Cerveteri, uh, where the most uh, richest tombs, and they served, as you can see here in that um, picture, they served for uh, many chamber tombs, different chamber tombs that were in the ground because the tumulus it ju is just the cover with a mound of, uh, of ground and the actual tomb are um, in the ground encircled by that structure with an opening, a dromos, a passage as you can see here and given its uh, a huge um, dimension it could, one of uh, each tumulus could serve from many different chamber tombs. There is also um, uh, the, the record of an house tomb, which was made or excavated directly into the rocks, into the, the hills, or it was built up with bricks, stone bricks, 
and uh, um, the the tumulus uh, and the most richest and famous uh, necropolis or cemetery of the Etruscan society were the one of Tarquinia and Cerveteri. There are others, but those one are the, the one that I decided to took into consideration today. As you can see here from that uh, tool, the uh, placing of the dead body inside the chamber of, uh, um, of the, the tumul's tomb happened uh, with the, the dead body placed in a sort of bed, that bed, which was or uh, directly uh, uh, digging and excavated into the rocks that composed the, the tomb, or it has some sort of uh, um, building, build up, and it was decorated as well. The, uh, the body was covered with uh, um, some sort of uh, terracotta or even stones, um, top uh, lid that resemble uh, the uh, anatomical um, shape of, the, the, of a body which is laid on, on a bed. Sarcophagus were also used. And this is, these are pretty much famous. This is a terracotta one, a burned clay one. And this is also a terracotta one, but it's also, and they have also used some of them in the stone material, such as tufus and marble. And they were decorated not only with uh, reliefs and uh, sculptures, statues, but also with colors. Um, we can see here traces of uh, um, paintings in, and pigments uh, in um, uh, yellow, uh, red and blue, and also uh, black. They represent the um, person, the individual which was inhumated into the, the sarcophagus. And um, it's very precious for us because it can give us uh, many information regarding the, um, uh, the, the, the clothing of the, the time and also the personal um, decoration, as we can call it, makeup and jewelry, and also pieces of uh, uh, furniture that were very common in their houses back then. But also, it could have had a double burial and represent a couple of uh, married people. But uh, uh, everything that they show, even the, the later ones, shows um, images from common lives. So, uh, what is important from today's lesson are um, the decoration, the pictorial and uh, um, uh, paintings all that, uh, that enrich many of the chamber tombs in Tarquinia and why they are um, so much important. You can see here the entrance of one of the chambers and the, the traces of the, the, the decoration of the paintings all around. Okay. You can still see me. Please let me know in the comment because uh, sometimes I've got uh, a delay of the streaming. So if you can um, tell me this, it will be much appreciated. Thank you. So we shall continue. So uh, it was important because the, uh, the study of the, the paintings of the uh, figure and uh, the themes of each painting 
was um, studied by um, Brandt, among many other uh, scholars and students, that um, try to, to see into the, uh, the paintings uh, the way the ancient Etruscan saw the afterlife and so uh, it can give us uh, many information about the rituals that he believed they used. This is another tomb, the relief's tomb, a chamber tomb. You can see here um, they are all, um, uh, they are not real, they are in reliefs and appliques, and that tomb, specific tomb, is covered by them, and they are element. Probably you can see better here, and that came from um, modern and more common life and working life, such as uh, in the houses, such as um, there are instruments um, linked to the works, um, into the, um, the farms, into the fields, but also there are instruments of war. Um, you can see here and here, shields, um, part of the, the panoplia, uh, a blade cover, and also um, some elements about um, ritual, banquets, fans also. This is <laughs> also some food, as you can see. So uh, this is important because um, that specific tomb and the one with uh, the walls uh, covered in painting show the richness of the Etruscan society back then and the wealth of the family members. And all these uh, chamber tomb, they were believed um, to be used from a single genus, from a single family, and all the, the generation of that um, of that specific family. And so this is all elements that regard the importance and linked to the social um, status of the uh, that specific family. Oh, sorry. So, as I was mentioning earlier, Brandt studies um, the different the difference into um, the paintings of the tomb, and uh, he recollect some of the scene and linked some of the scene to the Earth theory. A tripartite theory. If you don't remember, I'll, I'll quickly um, give you a recap. Uh, we um, talk about the Earth theory, among many others, in one of the first lessons. Um, Earth theory um, divided uh, the, the way uh, in which a body, from the moment of death, um, underwent under different phases, but not the simple uh, biological one, such as um, skeletonization, decomposition, um, but in more cultural and for its soul, like different ways. Uh, the first one is the moment of death, is the moment of separation uh, before you, the, 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 the dead person uh, that in that specific moment, his death happened to be living, so he was part of the living world. Then there was the moment of death. Uh, before the moment of death and uh, um, this, uh, the, the burial happened to be, for Earth, a liminal, intermediate um, period of time during which 
uh, the, um, the dead person is in a sort of limbo. It's not living or dead. It's in between world. And then there is the moment of burial when the, the spirit of that uh, dead um, individual is, is, um, uh, is resting. It's not um, still in the limbo and, con and could go into the um, afterworld. So uh, Brand see the same division, the uh, three-part um, vision of life, even in the um, in the uh, in the tombs in the in the painting of the tombs. But before we'll dig into this. He also uh, divided three times of cultural uh, history and evolution of Etruscan uh, society by the analysis and the study of the paintings. The very first one, which is the, um, the, the, uh, the, the earliest period, shows us um, images about happy, Happy life, common life, uh, such as feasts, banquets, um, games, seen from fishing and hunting, dances, all of these are um, taken directly from the uh, common lives of the Etruscan people. The second period, which happened to be around uh, the time in which uh, the Etruscan um, have contacts with um, Greeks, ancient Greeks, see the, the presence in the paintings of the tombs of demonic demons and underworld figure. Uh, this figure are, um, have a terrible and uh, um, feral aspect. You can see here a tree-headed snake-like, dragon-like, under, uh, underground anctonic figure. This is um, Tiffon from the, uh, was dated that tomb from the, the, the first century before Christ. And that in the center, we have a figure that probably was inspired by the contacts, the relationship uh, between uh, the, the Greek society, which is Karun, Charun, uh, just like the same name of the um, farrier, underground farrier of, and um, taker of the, the soul in the um, mythology of the, the ancient Greek, but here it's not just the same, it's not a farrier, it, it has not a boat, it has a hammer instead, and uh, wings, and it, uh, it has a much more scary image to, to it. And this is another um, infernal figure, Vant, and those uh, infernal figures are meant to be psychopompoi. They accompanied the, um, the dead in their uh, passage from the living world to the world of the dead. And it's not a case that they are placed at the side of uh, a door, which means that the, the the division of, uh, of that passage of uh, the two states from the living and uh, from the other part of the, the door, the dead. This is what I was mentioning before. And uh, uh, the, the, three, um, the three phases of uh, um, underlying by Earth 
uh, in the first one there is the soul and the death. In the second, there are the living and the mourners in that uh, intermediate liminal period. And at the end, there is the corpse and the burial. So, uh, it also brand by that division of the, the scene, said that uh, the earlier soci Etruscan society happened to be um, happy and carefree society, which was uh, represented by the banquet, by the feast and dances, during the, the contact with the, the Greek, uh, some sort of trouble emerged, and so we have some uh, demonic figure represented, and that escalated into the very late phase of the, the Etruscan uh, culture and society, which are the, the, the second and the first century before, before Christ, and the emergent of the uh, pretty much scary, much more scarier figure, as you can see here and here, demonic figure, are um, a record for date. So, the um, application of the Earth's three-part um, division can see easily that the very first uh, part is the ekphora that we saw yesterday in the lesson of uh, for ancient Greek, which is the wake and the morning of the, um, the, the the living and the preparation of the dead body of the corpse. There is also the farewell from the living to the, the, the seed. And also some um, uh, figure are dancing for that sort of uh, separation. And it all took part for the, the ritual uh, as a form of mourning and honoring the dead. The second part uh, which overlapped to Earth's liminal state, intermediate state, C, uh, the uh, travel, the infernal travel of the, the dead uh, individual that was buried into the tomb, his departure from the, the living, and as you can see here, it, during that uh, part, uh, the living honored the dead and helped it reaching um, its neutralization of the, the soul by having um, funeral games. It was believed that uh, the gladiatory games, which were uh, taken by Romans, came derived directly from the uh, very ferocious and bloodly Etruscan um, funerary games. So there was a uh, blood splitting. You can see some images of it. There is also some mythological images, such as the um, a sacrifice. But uh, that sort of neutralization, if you, we can call it so, of the soul was also made with some uh, erotic images, some images, non we can call it non-conventional images, that uh, give a rest to the soul in that very hard time. And then we have the third phase, which is the phase when the, the seed hand is traveled and could be easily reconciled with the, the world of the dead. You can see here some image 
of the farewell between uh, our living and, and dead. And um, it was, oh, sorry, it, the, the dead um, soul um, was accompanied to the uh, afterworld by Charum, as I was mentioning before. Here happened um, a sort of uh, um, a sort of uh, uh, um, sorry, I, I'll search the word because um, of this. Uh, I don't remember the word in English because it's judizio, but I don't remember. Document. You know when you don't remember a word that you that you know very well, but sorry, sometimes happen. <laughs> so there is the judgment of the, the, the dead body of the dead soul. by infernal creature that was um, the same as in many other um, ancient society and mythology. And in the afterlife, the dead is was believed to um, have a happy afterlife with a feast and a banquet with all the other um, dead people, the other dead soul. So uh, the Truscan does not have a um, view of uh, the afterlife as bad as the um, uh, Greek has. Let's remember that for the Greek, um, the afterlife was believed to be um, a land of uh, shallowness, of uh, shadow like soul that has uh, basically no feelings at all. And they, they are not good or bad because they can feel anything. They are completely in oblivion. And obliviated by everything, so it was a uh, pretty much <laughs> uh, bad um, view of the afterlife, or at least for certain point of their uh, culture and their history. Even um, af uh, even when um, then was introduced the Elysium, there was still the notion of um, hell. Uh, when uh, some part of the soul are uh, thrown into, but does not happen to the Etruscan society. Uh, and the Etruscan society shows, uh, and we can see easily from their tomb, and we have uh, much of the information that we have today from the, uh, the Etruscan, we have from directly from the um, burial record, archaeological record, because we don't have um, some form of text, of documents. We have some, of course, even in the uh, paintings um, on the wall, there is a sort of description, but um, the, the length of the text that we have is very short and they represent um, a repetitive uh, system because um, for the major part, there are names and offerings to certain gods and a form of uh, religious um, prayers and vows. So um, we don't have in our possession um, their text about their social and common normal life and activities. So everything we can uh, reconstruct, we can gain from uh, the burial records 
and we can see that uh, in a Etruscan society, both women and men had the same importance. And this is in contrast with the Greek society, where men had more power and they shared the same level of uh, richness. As I mentioned earlier in previous lesson, uh, the clothing and the, the decoration of a, uh, a body of a female show the wealth of the family more than the, the body of a male, because male usually shows the, uh, the power that that family have in politics or in general, in the warfare, in the, um, in the society, its status in, in the society. So, um, as you can see, it was a um, very um, uh, form, very well-formed society and a rich one, and many of the um, of their acquisition um, of their craft and tools was taken directly from the Romans and also some part of the mythology of the afterline of the Etruscan was uh, linked and was taken with uh, some modification to the Romans too. But uh, about the Romans we will talk about tomorrow so if you have any more question about that lesson or about Etruscan in general, uh, please uh, bear in mind that I will upload um, more uh, information and more uh, readings for you on Google Classroom. So um, have a look on them. Um, so if uh, there are no questions, I will leave and uh, See you tomorrow. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.